No. Nope. So Hammerspace Workshop is a one-of-a-kind local place where any creator, maker, or inventor can call home. Owner Dave Dalton uses the space to create molds with a laser, which makes working with metal a whole lot easier. Let's say that you have some of these pewter candy dishes lying around or you've seen some at the thrift shop and really want a fun upcycle project. Well, you can turn them into challenge coins with a pewter casting system. So this has actually been repurposed into a Slytherin coin and you flip it around and it's got Gringotts the bank. Now, Dave Dalton actually made this and he's here to walk us through that entire process that actually starts with a computer design. Yeah, the first step is a digital drawing of the, the thing that you want to make. Uh, in the case of this coin over here, this was a, a design from Harry Potter, or we today use the Better Kansas City logo and turned that into something that can be pewter cast. So we started with a very colorful logo up at the top and transformed that into a black and white image that we can flip and mirror so that we can make a mold so that when it gets cast, it gets properly reversed into the original shape that we want and then laser cut and etch different parts to assemble to make a mold that we can pour pewter into to make a metal object that's never existed before. Well, if you're just walking into it, it sounds like a very complicated process, but you've broken it down simply, and you guys sort of engineered this right here in Kansas City. Yeah, this was a process that we came up with in order to address a need that we had for simple metal objects that we might only need one or two of. This is something that works a lot better at scale than a traditional investment casting system, which we also do here in bronze and silver. But pewter is this sort of approachable, low temperature metal, and we've used this process to teach adults and children and all sorts of creative people how to cast in metal for the first time in an approachable and easy way. And the laser process that's going on right now, how does that actually work? So the art that we have on our screen here acts as a template for our computer to follow to lay down a laser beam one row at a time or by following the outline of our part to cut out parts that you design using CAD software or drawing software like Illustrator or CorelDRAW. So where do you guys mostly use that? Is it coins? Is it for birthdays? Uh, we use it for awards, for medallions for athletes, for challenge coins, for congratulations for employees or you know other events for organizations and we use it for decorative pieces on costumes for comic-con all sorts of little detailed metal work that we would ordinarily do with a much more expensive more involved process okay or you can always just take it to the bank at gringotts and see what you can cash in well, that was for all my Harry Potter fans out there. Like me, let our nerd flags fly. Now, in a bit, things will really heat up as we melt metal into something new. Welcome back. So it's time to head back to Hammerspace Workshop and put our laser cut mold to work. So when you talk about melting, pewter things really have to heat up. And Dave, we've actually already started that process and we've got some molten metal on our hands. Yeah, so we have our pot of molten pewter here and some new, well, new old pewter, new to us, that we're going to add to our volume with. So we're gonna just dip that right into our hot pot. And in very short order, look, all melted away. And Dave actually told me this is 400 degrees, maybe even a little bit hotter, and that's why he's doing all the heavy lifting right now. Things are actually bubbling there. What's going on? Uh, well, there may be a little wax and a little uh, residue, some entrapped air under the bottom of this part so that heats up and bubbles a little bit but we've melted away the bottom of our part and now we have a full pot of metal to make our cast with. Do some skimming of the dross at the top. Dross is the uh, awful residue that is formed when you mix metal with the corrosive oxygen atmosphere of our planet. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a pour here into our mold. We'll take our metal and little over splash is fine. We can remelt all of that. That looks so cool. Fill it completely up. Give it a little tap. Make sure we get all the air bubbles out of our mold. And now we just have to let it cool for a few minutes and we can open up the mold and reveal the pewter inside. This is our interior of the mold and this is going to create the impression in our molten metal that renders as the Better Kansas City logo. Okay, well we can't wait to see how this pewter version of Better KC turns out. Well, he's such a maker at heart and in just a few minutes, it's time for the big reveal.
Well, it's set for a few moments held together by cardboard and clamps. Let's see how our pewter creation turned out. Now it's time for the moment of truth, the big reveal. We are about to see our Better Kansas City pewter casting. All right, so I'm gonna open this up and reveal what we have inside. So we'll take our clamps off. Hopefully, we will find a beautiful metal object inside. So first, oh, look at that. Well, that's beautiful. Now, is this done? And if so, is there any finishing last So this steps? is not done right now. You can still see some carbon scoring from the pouring process. Uh -huh. And we have our design up here at the top, but we also have an attached sprue and uh -huh. our button, which provided weight and pressure to create this nice pattern. So we're gonna pop that out of there. We're gonna saw the sprue off and we're gonna go down to the jewelry department, buff it up, and then we'll have a finished object. Okay, what kind of look are you going for? So we're gonna finish up the edges so that they're all shiny and pretty, and then we're gonna make them look dark and antique. So we're going to be cleaning all of those tool marks up making a nice smooth curve on the top of all these parts. So I'm using a little quadruple-aught steel wool mm -hmm. to take that black residue that we put on there back off of all of our highlights. Just using a lot of elbow grease there to yeah, shine things up. Yeah, good old-fashioned elbow grease. There's no substitute for it, just like Ma used to make. And I like what the steel wool does. It gives it that sort of antique luster. Mm -hmm. Does. What's really cool. Well, a little bit about Dave. He's a bladesmith and a blacksmith, and he also has a degree in design and has helped build robots professionally, which led him to create this process. And again, this is the logo that you just saw.